you can do anything through the REST API that you can do with a mouse and keyboard interacting with GitLab through a browser. Hey everybody, it's Dan, the Git School Dude, once again with another GitLab tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing you something very super cool called the GitLab REST API. And not just that, but we're going to use an open source project called Python GitLab, which makes the REST API interaction incredibly easy. Today we're going to extract merge request information, post a message on an existing merge request, and create a new issue all with just a few lines of Python code. Today we're going to be using my GitLab Hello World repo. Feel free to clone or fork the project to follow along at home. And also hit the star button. Okay, so here's my local clone of the Hello repo. And I've already created a topic branch with this new content. Really all I've done here is added the Python GitLab submodule to this file. And then I've created this one script that actually uses Python GitLab to do three different examples. But before we run the script, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to learn about software principles. Just kidding. This isn't the type of YouTube video where I'm just going to read off of a Wikipedia page. This is the type of YouTube video where I'm going to look at a picture. So REST APIs are very common for web services. GitLab supports it, but so does GitHub, Bitbucket, and pretty much any modern software tool that has a web services component that you can think of. This is basically how it works. You as the client construct an HTTP request. That request goes to the web server and a response comes back. There are different formats, but JSON is pretty common and that's what GitLab uses. So today, that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to interact with GitLab using the RESTful API so that we can actually read from and write to different areas of our GitLab project. I'll put the link to the GitLab API documentation in the description. It's very extensive. And with this type of information, you can construct the URL that we're talking about in this image. For example, this is the base of the URL, and then the documentation will show you for each different thing you want to do, what do you have to add on to the URL in order to interface with the part of GitLab that you're interested in. All of this documentation, and there's a lot of it, can be summed up in one sentence. You can do pretty much everything in GitLab by constructing the right URL. Here's an example URL. This project ID is the project for the Git School Dude Hello World project. And I have requested the commit list from merge request 32. Firefox has been nice and formatted this in an easy to read way, but if you look at the raw data, it just looks like this JSON formatted output. But here you can see the list of the commits that are actually associated with merge request 32. So this URL looks simple, but if you want to do more complicated things, it gets a lot more complicated. And you don't want to be constructing the URL yourself. That's where this open source project called Python GitLab comes into play. It makes it even easier to do these types of things because it handles the URL generation for you. Before I show you the code, let me show you how to run it. If you run dash dash help, it'll basically show you what to do. This script provides three examples of using the REST API. The first thing it's going to do is summarize all open MRs for the project given. The second thing it's going to do is post a note to an existing MR. And the third thing it does is create a new issue in the project. These are just three random examples. You can literally do anything through this REST API that you could do by clicking through the web GUI in GitLab. So this script has two required arguments. The auth key, which is a personal access token for authentication with GitLab. I'll talk more about this in a minute. And then the projects. This auth key is associated with the Git School Dude user in GitLab.com. And the second argument I'm giving it is the project I want to interact with, which is of the form namespace slash project name. So let's go ahead and run the script. Remember, the first thing it's going to do is summarize all open merge requests. Let's hit enter to trigger that action. It's going out. It's getting every merge request that's open and printing the labels associated with it, if any. This doesn't have any. What issues it closes. In this case, merge request 32 would close issue 12 and uh, just the number of notes that are in the discussion. So we can verify this. If I flip over and I go to Merge Request 32, you'll see it's the one at the top. It's actually associated with this topic branch as I'm filming. And you can see that there's no labels. It's associated with issue 12. And there are only two notes in the discussion area. 
for example, one besides the two lines it takes to actually connect to the GitLab server, everything we saw was done in this number of lines. In one line, we get a list of all merge requests that are in the open state. We iterate over that list and print the information about what labels it has, which issues are closed, and the number of notes in the discussion area. Let's move on to example two. We've already done example one, so we're gonna skip that one. So in example two, we're gonna post a note to an existing merge request. When we hit enter, it's gonna say, which MR ID do you wanna post a message to? So let's flip over and see which one we wanna do. So the one we're looking at right here is merge request 32. So if I give it 32, and then it wants the message. So let's give it a message. Okay, cool, let's flip over and see our merge request. Check it out, just now, posted. The next example creates an issue. So I'm gonna show you the issue page beforehand. You can see I've got a couple open issues here, uh, number four and number 12, but that's it. And if we go ahead and run example three to create a new issue, it's gonna ask us for the issue title. And it wants an issue description. can see that it completed. If I flip on over and refresh the page, bam, there's our new issue. So it's important to note here that this issue was created by me because I use this off key associated with my user. So now is probably as good a time as any to show you where you can create these off keys. So if you go into your user section under settings, on the left here, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff. You wanna click on access tokens. Here you can create a new token, give it an arbitrary name, the name doesn't matter. And you can give it an expiration date and say what scope it has. The one I have down here, GitLab Python example was created today. And you can revoke a token at any time. As you can imagine, the token I'm using today will be revoked as soon as the video goes up. Because if you know what you're doing, if you have this token, you could completely destroy my entire GitLab project if you wanted to. So be aware of that. If you're gonna start writing scripts that interact with a GitLab project, be aware of the permissions of your users and which tokens you're using. I highly recommend if you're gonna write a script like this that you pass in the token, don't hard code it. You don't wanna commit plain text access tokens to your repository, that's asking for a disaster. So let's take a look at the code one more time. I already showed you the code where we list the MRs and the code where we connect to the GitLab server. Now this connection here is using the GitLab module. And if I go to the top of the file, you can see that we import GitLab. Now I have packaged it as an external sub-module in my repository. So the code travels along with the repo, which is why I add it to the path here to be imported. But if you go through the documentation in the Python GitLab project, and I'll put the URL in the description on where to get it, you can simply pip install it on the machine, and then you can literally do this without any of the path nonsense going on here. So you can see this entire file is only 64 lines long. And essentially all it does is construct this class that I have created and run the execute method on it with the arguments given on the command line. The main run method does our three examples, which I've already shown you how they run. And you can see how easy it is in code to actually do the things we do in the example. This is example one, this is example two, and example three. So we've already talked about example one. You can see it's even easier to post a note to an MR. All you need is the ID, you do a get on that ID, and then you literally do mr.notes.create, give it the note, which we read in from the user, and that's it. It's done, it's posted. Same thing goes with creating an issue. We literally just read in from the user what the title and description are, and we make a one-line call to project.issues.create, give it the title, give it the description, and it magically shows up in GitLab. Super easy, super powerful. 
If you're interested in this capability and you're wondering how do I do particular things, you want to go check out the Python GitLab documentation. It's really good. Go to this URL. I'll put it in the video description. You can basically find the thing that you're interested, for example, merge requests, and they give you all kinds of great examples. It's a great resource. Check it out. The last thing I want to talk about is some real life applications. If you're a DevOps nerd like me, you're probably already excited about the potential applications of this type of capability. Here's a few examples that I've actually used in my day job. Let's say you aren't using GitLab CI and using some kind of external uh, CI system like Jenkins, but your repository lives in GitLab. Let's say your Jenkins test wants to report back to the merge request associated with the Jenkins job that's in testing. Well, you can use a script like this run at the end of your Jenkins job to post a pass or fail message on the merge request that was tested. Another example, let's say you have some external testing suites, maybe some static analysis or unit test tools, maybe some code coverage mechanisms, and you want to automatically create an issue when something pops up in those external testing tools. You can do that with this capability. You can do anything through the REST API that you can do with a mouse and keyboard interacting with GitLab through a browser, and that includes merging an MR. Another use case you could imagine this would be super helpful is imagine you're transitioning to or from some other tool chain. Like maybe you have a database of another issue tracking tool and you need to move that into GitLab for historical purposes. You could write a, a script that interfaces with the API to essentially make every issue from that database through the API and it'll just show up. The last thing I want to mention is that you can tie this capability into another GitLab capability, which are called webhooks. And I don't have time to get into the details in this video. Post in the comments if you want more information on this or a video dedicated to webhooks. Webhooks basically allow you to trigger some kind of action based on an event that happens in your project. For example, someone creates a new issue or someone posts a note to a merge request or someone pushes to a branch. All of those are events that webhooks can detect and act on. That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Dan the Get School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to learn about software principles.